It's Breaking the News with Des Clark. I am Des Clark and this is Breaking the News, the show that breaks the week's news and asks four opinionated panellists to put it back together again. And joining me this week is stand-up and broadcaster Ray Bradshaw and with him is award-winning writer and comedian Alison Spittle. And facing off against them is stand-up and actor Susan Riddle and joining her is Scotland's premier blind comedian Jamie McDonald. In the news this week, an Edinburgh woman's wedding video has been accidentally sold in a charity shop. The disappointed buyer returned it, complaining they'd been shortchanged as they were owed three more weddings and a funeral. <laughs> <laughs> it has been claimed that the Prince of Wales has decided that his youngest brother, Edward, will not be getting the title of Duke of Edinburgh, although he will get a badge for washing Camilla's car and cutting the grass. <laughs> <laughs> and an Irvin mum gave birth in the shower as paramedics talked her stunned partner through a DIY delivery over the phone, although there was confusion Confusion when the dad was asked to grab the head and shoulders and started to wash his wife's hair. <laughs> <laughs> right, you've met the panel, let's crack on with round one. <laughs> And this is the Broken News Round, where our teams have to guess the two major stories of the week that have been mashed together into one single news headline. So, Ray and Alison, can you tell me our first story, please? All of Scotland have been celebrating in the streets after... The First Minister confirmed it's level zero, but not quite as we know it. Car horns blared in the centre of Rome as... Masks are here to stay. So are you ready for hitting the back of the net? So what do we think then, Ray? Any ideas as to our first story, mate? Uh, this will be the story that Scotland is hitting level zero as of Monday and we're getting set free. <laughs> are you buzzing for it, Ray? Uh, no, I am not <laughs> buzzing for it. Uh, I liked in that wee clip there we had John Beatty saying um, level zero, not as we know it, as if anyone knows what any of the rules are anymore. <laughs> um, oh. no, I'm not overly looking forward to it, but it's, I'm glad we can get out there. And most importantly, I have a two-year-old. I can take him to soft play and do wrestling moves on him. Yay! So. <laughs> <laughs> well done. It is the news that all of Scotland will move to level zero from this Monday, but mandatory use of face coverings will remain in place for some time. Now, Shetland is already in level zero. The Isles have had very few infections due to being quarantined in that big box that surrounds them on the weather map. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about it, Alice? In Freedom Day, they're saying it Monday. It's coming. Are you pleased with these announcements? Oh, my gosh. I am so delighted. I love the idea of a level zero. It's like Coke zero, you know. You're not sure <laughs> if it's good for you, but you maintain it healthier than the other options. <laughs> 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 Jamie, what about it then? We're talking about Freedom Day. Monday is coming. Are you pleased with the latest announcements? Well, I'm down in Sheffield, so I can't wait to join the kind of England-wide Royal Rumble uh, in, in the city <laughs> centres. But I, I think up, up north, like they've just put in a, a, a 12 o'clock curfew for no reason at all. And and it just put me in mind, do you remember when Terminator said he was lowering himself into the steel and he said to John Connor, like, I now know why you cry, but it's something I can never do. That's like the SNP's <laughs> attitude to fun. It's just outrageous. Uh, you're right about the slight differences, obviously, between England and Scotland. Uh, the bars are returning to a 12pm close, uh, which is great for us. Uh, we are rejoicing here because it will be dark enough for the people of Scotland to mate again. <laughs> <laughs> Susan, are you pleased with this development? Um, it doesn't really make much difference to me because I've got chronic hay fever so <laughs> and it's been off the, off the charts this year like my hay fever is acting like I've been snorting lines of pollen um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, is it, and like this is a, a list of things that you can do if you've got hay fever right you're not allowed to go to grassy areas uh, gardens uh, parks you're not allowed to be near fresh flowers you've got to stay indoors uh, you've got to shut all the windies Wash your clothes daily, hoover and polish regularly. So when everybody else is like allowed back out, I'm going to be in the house myself with all the windy shut, like hoovering. So <laughs> <laughs> go to the soft play with Ray. <laughs> <laughs> but Ray, we enter the brave new world on Monday of Level Zero. What are you most looking forward to in a restriction-free world? Uh, I'm looking forward to calling out everyone that said we should go for a pint when this is all done like every <laughs> single person and just watch the panic on their face yeah. as my new neighbour goes oh 
you were serious. Okay. Um, <laughs> and it's just me and him in the bowling club drinking Maduri. I can't <laughs> wait. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm looking forward to, um, not when I go to a shop, not feeling like I'm in a kind of perspex version of the Crystal Maze. Um, <laughs> because honestly, like for blind people, getting around shops has been a nightmare. I went the wrong way around a one-way system and it was like a killer was on the loose. Like, <laughs> so I'm, I'm looking forward to all that ending. That's, that's actually a really good point because... Uh, as a ginger person, uh, queuing for the shops in the sun has been an absolute death <laughs> state. I've, I've been sunburned twice at the queue for Asda. Which is, yeah. Same here, brother. Yeah. Same. Listen, um, I actually when think I... they should have like ginger spaces and like pub gardens and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> just get shuffled into the shade. And Imagine just... that a sign NHS and gingers in free. It's just straight in. It you put a wee ginger wig on the wheelchair guy in the disabled toilet. He's going to chill out for a bit. As the restrictions are eased, that is the correct answer. Well done. Health Secretary Sajid Javid said he was hoping to withstand a summer wave, presumably referring to the one he'll give reporters when he gets sacked in August. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yes, the move to level zero for all of Scotland is the correct answer. Well done. Ray and Alison, you get two points for that. Now to you, Susan and Jamie. What was the other story we were after? I think that was about the Euros final between Italy and England. (laughs) I nearly said Scotland. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, in that is the right answer. Good on you. Is the news that England's bid to end their 55 year wait for a major trophy finished in an agonising penalty shootout defeat? It wasn't to be for the England squad as Italy triumphed to take the trophy back to Rome. Gareth Southgate described the defeat as incredibly painful, a sentiment echoed by millions of Scots who were still sore laughing on Monday morning. <laughs> Alison, did you manage to catch the final of the Euros? I did, I did. Um, I, my dad is English. Uh, my dad is so English that even I feel colonised by him. <laughs> <And> <laughs> the weird thing, though, about this whole football tournament is uh, when I saw a lad um, save that last penalty, my first thought went to the Italian deli that's next door to my house. And I was like, I hope that's OK. Like, I hope it survives whatever's going to happen tonight. Because I love the focaccia there. I love the focaccia. <laughs> it's so focaccia. That's Italian for catching a goal (laughs) brilliant Uh, Ray you've been involved I know with a bit of the coverage did you manage to catch the final yeah of course I did I absolutely loved every second of it Um, started two minutes in when uh, someone from the left wing scored for England so that would have annoyed Nigel Farage so that was the (laughs) obviously it's a tournament that dominated headlines for the past few weeks Uh, the social media abuse targeted at Marcus Rashford Jadon Sancho and Bayoko Saka has prompted an anti-racism discussion with the Prime Minister Boris Johnson promising to ban people guilty of sending racist abuse to footballers from attending matches. Now, the three players have received great plaudits for the way that they've handled themselves since the penalty shootout. So, be it in the England squad, beyond maybe the Scotland team, who has been your hero of the tournament? Susan? Mm. I want to say Marcus Rashford, uh, because apart from the fact that he fed all the kids... Um, it got Scottish people to actually support England. So <laughs> <laughs> I really do want to see him, but I'm going to have to say that wee motor that brought the ball in. Yes. <laughs> yes. That was brilliant, I mean, wasn't on. it? Uh, Ray, what about you? Who was your hero of the tournament? The personal favourite of mine is they interviewed a bunch of Scotland fans at down in London to watch the Scotland-England game and they asked for score predictions and one guy was so steaming he said it was going to be 2-1 Hibs which (laughs) is is the guy we we all want and need and the other night Hibs play Arsenal what was the score? 2-1 Hibs there you go he's he's ahead of us all Uh, obviously the next big tournament is at the end of next year and it is the World Cup less than 500 days to go so what would you do to make sure Scotland get there? Susan I would say sign me as their goalie because if they'd ever seen me at a wedding, I have caught each and every one of my pals' bouquets. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm still not married, but you know, I try. So. <laughs> uh, Jamie, you're shouting this one. Obviously, we're looking forward to the World Cup. Jamie, what would you do to make sure that Scotland get there? Encourage them not to go, man. It's about 50 degrees over there. I was, I was <laughs> up in, uh, I was up in Glasgow doing a bit of work a couple of weeks ago, and three different taxi drivers, and it was about 18 degrees. Like, oh, it's too hot for me, mate. <laughs> 
So, <laughs> uh, Rage is balked at the idea of 50 degrees in yeah. Qatar. <laughs> oh, He's no. still going to go. No, 50 degrees in Qatar sounds like Susan in a hay fever. I'd come back in an urn. So I would yeah. <laughs> survive that. <laughs> uh, well done to you, Susan and Jamie. You get two points for that. It was the mashup of Scotland moving to level zero and England's disappointment in the Euros final. And at the end of that round, well done. The teams are all square. <laughs> Now, so much of our news is about public opinion, and this week we spoke to actress and comedian Karen Dunbar and actor Tom Urie. So, Jamie and Susan, what story do you think our Tom is on about here? What I do worry about is where is it going once it's been gobbled up? Is it coming back out, or is it going into a different dimension? Call me old-fashioned, call me paranoid, but I will never feel comfortable. I would almost feel like, uh, you know, in a fish tank, you get a bottom feeder. Um, we could all be cleaning up the environment whilst going for a, a run to Largs, couldn't we? There's, there's been a mad new concept car uh, created that um, not only does it uh, fully automated and stuff, but it helps uh, uh, suck pollution out of the environment. Yes, it is the news that a car yeah. has been designed to strip the air of pollution as it drives along. Created by British designer Thomas Heatherwick, it's hoped that the car will go into production in China in 2023 with plans to make a million of them. It says that it takes a tennis ball worth of bad particles out of the air a year, which doesn't sound very much, but then... They're making a million of them, as as you say. And um, that works out because my dog loses a million tennis balls, like actual tennis balls a year. So <laughs> it's just made my, our, our walkies carbon neutral. <laughs> what do you think about this then, Susan? Does it sound like a good idea? Aye, I think it sounds good that a car can like, eat its own pollution. No, all we need to do is get the cows to eat their own farts and it's problem solved. <laughs> 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 what are you thinking then, Alison? Do we need to be more innovative when it comes to climate change? I think we do because... So I'm actually very scared by those billionaires who are flinging themselves into space because you see these like very, very rich people looking up places on Mars. It's a lot like your current boyfriend Googling um, bachelor pads on Zoopla. Like, it's not good news. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Something's very wrong. <laughs> it does sound wrong. Uh, Ray, what are you thinking about it? Do we need to be more innovative now maybe when it comes to sorting this climate change problem? Yeah, I think we need more gingers in politics and then we'll get the old ones seriously. <laughs> Like, I guarantee you, you put a ginger in charge of Australia, they're blocking the sun out within 10 years. 100%. <laughs> uh, what's your view on it then, Susan? Do you think we need to be more innovative when it comes to climate change? Aye, I do. Uh, but some people don't. And by some people, I mean mama. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was telling her about this pollution eating motor and she was like, oh, I know. But she's like, this is the first time it's no rained in Glasgow since 1976 during the fair. So... <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I want them to solve like global warming but maybe if they just hold off a few years <laughs> <laughs> well let's all have a go at it then if we're looking to make a change if you were to design a vehicle for the future what features would you give it I'm going to kick off with you Jamie I, I would make a, a supercar for the blind you know it would go 200 miles an hour it would have monster truck wheels uh, great parking sensors and it would be kind of very ill-conceived, reckless, and in no ways economically viable. And I'd call it Blindy Ref 2. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alison, what are you thinking? If you were going to design a vehicle for the future, what feature would you have on it? I would make the car out of uh, car cigarette lighters. I think they're the best bit of a car. <laughs> <laughs> they're the ones. They make it feel so modern. Sometimes like I like just to put on a cigarette lighter in the car and then stare into it like I'm looking into the sun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ray, what are you thinking then? If you were to design a vehicle for the future, what features would you give it? Just a, a wee button that every time someone doesn't indicate it calls him an Audi Walloper like and just shouts it <laughs> like something like that would be great That's I'd like nice. a wee button just to like I don't know just to apologise for my bad driving just like a, like a neon sign pops up just like my bad <laughs> just something like that <laughs> oh well done yes a pollution eating car is the correct answer two points go to Susan and Jamie right hey. over to you Ray and Alison what do you think Karen is talking about here it's time for them to go as much as I love the fact that you can throw them at the window and still play them, kind of. As much as I love the fact that you can put them in the microwave and turn them into a nice plant pot, it's time for them to go. I like to make people mix tapes, so I will miss that. Do you know what? I'll probably still do that. I mean, it's 
It's so last century. So I presume this must be about Sainsbury's who have decided to stop selling CDs and DVDs. Is exactly the right answer. Well Yay! done, Alison. Oh. Yes, <laughs> it is indeed the news that Sainsbury's have said that they will no longer be selling CDs and DVDs in their stores, although they will continue to sell vinyl records. Other supermarket mm. chains are still stocking CDs and DVDs, and at Lidl you can find them exactly where you'd expect, between the Parma Ham and the Night Vision goggles. <laughs> <laughs> When I see a person buy a CD, it's like seeing someone uh, buy like a hay penny bicycle. You know, you're just like, this is impractical. What are you doing? I'll miss the CD, but I, I know why it's gone and I'm delighted. My laptop doesn't, I don't yeah. think I have a DVD or a CD player in the house, actually. It's just gone out of fashion, hasn't it? Yeah. You can imagine if this show was on 15 years ago, we were having the same mm. conversation about mini discs. Yeah. It's like, yeah. oh, oh, what a shame. <laughs> but no, it's funny. Like, still, Some people still buy me audio books and CD. And, and I'm like, Ray, I, I don't have anywhere to play them. Well, that's what I tell my, my father-in-law every time he asks me how I'm getting on with Samuel Pepys' diaries. But... <laughs> <laughs> but why do you think then, Ray, that vinyl seems to have stood the test of time? Hipsters. Hipsters. Really? Because it's cool, yeah. And I, I'd imagine in 10, 15 years' time, you'll go back to someone's house and they'll put some music to spice it up and it'll be a now 36 CD and you'll be listening to Perfect Moment by Martin McCutcheon. Like, that is, <laughs> that's the way time's going to evolve and move on. What you know, oh, Ray? It's an absolute yeah. banger. An absolute, absolute banger. Belter all day long. clarity, it'd be beautiful. Oh, <laughs> <my goodness>. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think it is then that a lot of people still buy vinyl? I mean, I'll go with everybody else and just say pretentious hipsters. Um, yep. I actually had a guy uh, one time when I was on a date nap, I was chatting to him. I mentioned a song that I like, uh, and he yeah. went, Oh no, I can't stand reggaeton. And I was like, <gasps> Which reggaeton? I don't know what reggaeton is. <laughs> so I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, people like him that think they're better than you. Yeah, knowing what reggaeton is. <laughs> In answering what reggaeton is, I've not looked it up, I don't know, but I know that there was a little mix song called Reggaeton Lento, which for years I thought was just an Italian soup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Cockney Ring yeah. slang. He went absolutely <laughs> reggaeton line to last week. <laughs> uh, so, Alison, here's a question for you. CDs and DVDs have gone out of fashion, but what would you bring back into fashion? I would bring back the concept of shame. And uh, <laughs> I feel... <laughs> yes. I think more people could just feel a bit more shame sometimes. It's a bit too much. Very hard being brought up Catholic and living in a world where you're just like, love yourself. And I'm like, this goes against every belief I've been brought up by. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. That's nice, yeah, bringing things back. What we're looking at CDs and DVDs, Ray. They've gone out of fashion now, apparently. What would you bring back into fashion, though? Scurvy. <laughs> Yeah. Too, too many limes about for me. Too many limes. How many drinks you get now? There's lime and everything. You, the Diet Coke with lime just now. Here, here, Ray. Right, let's get people bow legged again. I don't actually know what Scurvy does. <laughs> uh, Jamie, have a go at this. What would you bring back into fashion? Two things drinking in trains after 9 pm and yes. civil liberties. <laughs> And you've got them the right way around in terms of the order. <laughs> uh, yes, CDs and DVDs being taken away from certain stores is the correct answer. And two points goes to Alison and Ray. Hey. You're tuned to Breaking the News on BBC Radio Scotland with me, Des Clark. Now, this round is all about who's in the news. So I will play you a clip of a mystery person. All you have to do is tell me who it is. So Ray and Alison, you're up first this time. Just tell me who is this. I'm not overtly ambitious. I don't uh, forever plan to what my next job is going to be. I've never done that. Uh, I certainly perhaps have a streak of stubbornness. If people think I can't do something, then I will say, well, perhaps I'd like to do it. It's John Major. It is so John Major. Oh. Why are we talking about John Major this week? Because he's hit out the government uh, for cutting the foreign aid bill. Um, I think he's joined Tyrone Mings and Marcus Rashford's shadow cabinet, which is good. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, well done, Ray. As former Prime Minister Sir John Major, John Major has been trending online this week after he hit out at the UK government's decision to temporarily cut spending and overseas aid by approximately four point four billion pounds. He says it seems that we can afford a national yacht that no one either wants or needs whilst cutting help to some of the most miserable and destitute people in the world I, I mean I kind of get what he's meaning about the royal yacht that's yeah. getting built but I think the way they could get people inside is they could all do a raffle so two people get it a day so like <laughs> yes. it'd be you and a celebrity so like one day you turn up and it's just me and Rylan on the yacht for a day and I've not brought my sunglasses so I'm blinded by his teeth like that'd be that'd be a good day out <laughs> Jamie what 
about it then? Obviously, speaking out against the foreign aid bill that was passed, are you surprised to hear these views coming from former Prime Minister Sir John Major? I just think when somebody said, you're trending online, John was expecting to be handed his fishing magazine. (laughs) (laughs) It was also on the topic of John Major announced recently that Johnny Lee Miller is going to play John Major in The Crown. But who would you get to play you? Alison, if you could cast somebody as yourself in a TV show or film, who would it be? Uh, I would pick Scarlett Johansson. Uh, she can play any role, as she's tried to before. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I really think she could do a good job of me. So, yeah, it would be Scarlett Johansson. Ray Bradshaw, who's playing you? I was going to write a joke for this, but there's no point because it would be John Hartson. Let's be honest. It's obviously <laughs> be John Hartson. I met him uh, maybe three, four weeks ago. We look very, very, very similar. And when I walked into the studio, he was sitting there and he didn't know I was there and I didn't know he was going to be there. And it was like when you know you go to the circus and one mirror is like slightly fatter and we just stared at each other. It was like, oh, it felt, I felt like it was on Long Lost Family. It was lovely. <laughs> Susan, what about you? You're casting someone to play you in a film or TV show. Who is it and why? I was just trying to think of like people that have said who I look like, and the only person was a uh, Patsy Palmer. Let's see, oh, uh, yeah. Bianca. Oh, Bianca. I oh, like when I was younger, and she was like peak Eastenders. People used to shout Ricky at me, <laughs> <laughs> passing cars, just like Ricky. <laughs> Patsy Palmer. Hi, Patsy, hi. Jamie, what about you? Who would you have cast to play you? Nowadays, you have to, if you're acting a role, you have to have had personal experience of that character's experience. So I've got two choices. Uh, Blunkett can take some acting <laughs> lessons or Clooney can blind himself. <laughs> <laughs> One of John Major's biggest achievements, you might remember, was setting up the famous Cones Hotline. That's where you'd ring an 0800 number and a traffic bollard would talk dirty to you. <laughs> <laughs> and there we have it. Two points go to Ray and Alison. That was, of course, the voice of Sir John Major. Right to Ooh. you, Susan and Jamie. It's your turn. Who is this and why are they in the news. We like to organise our visits to, to send a message in pictorial terms exactly what we're asking for. Uh, and I think this does it very well. It is Willie Rennie, the ex-leader of the Liberal Democrats uh, party in Scotland. It's the right answer. Well done. Yeah, it is Willie Rennie. <laughs> Willie Rennie announced this week that he'd be stepping down as the leader of the Scottish Liberal Democrats after 10 years in the job, saying it was time for fresh leadership. Now, if you saw it, Willie actually announced his decision via a YouTube video, making him the only politician whose resignation speech was interrupted halfway through by an advert for Just Eat. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so well in any. I didn't really know much about him, to be honest, but um, I spoke to my pal Stuart McPherson, who's also a comedian, and he interviewed him uh, in a wee comedy video. And he asked Willie Rennie, what would you have as a superpower? And Willie Rennie said, I'd like to be able to fly, but really close to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, what? why would you limit yourself? Like, the whole point of flying is so you can, like, soar above everybody and just have a hassle-free time. It's yeah. like saying, oh, I want to be invisible, but just when I'm myself. <laughs> 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 uh, that's, that's amazing. I wish I knew him when, when he was properly in politics uh, because his pictures, the photo opportunities that this man has done, I'm surprised he hasn't done rear of the year because, like, there's so many different photos yeah. of this guy in different uh, scenarios. And um, no, I really like him. I like him, number one, because of the way he's left. Like, it's amazing to have a politician that bows out with grace and not one that leaves a party because they've been caught kissing a woman on CCTV. Like, it's a real refreshing way to leave politics. So, yeah, Willie Rennie, I didn't know you, but I like you, and now you're gone. And I don't want to know any more about you in case I dislike you again. So. <laughs> what do you think then? Will we miss Willie Rennie from Scottish politics? Uh, yeah, I think we actually will. Well, because he's brought a bit of humour. I don't know if you even saw his tweet. So he announced he was resigning this week and then because of everything that's happened down south with the aid and all this kind of stuff, Lib Dem are up seven points and he tweeted, oh, I should have quit ages ago. <laughs> 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 that's what you want in a politician. Good. You want to see a sense of humour. And yeah, I think he... I think his legacy will be the photo ops. Like, it's got to be. There's so many. There's, uh, I can't remember. Was it the one done up as Harry Potter, I remember (laughs) seeing? I think think, think his legacy is that he's he's left a political party that can fit in a hackney cab with a seat to spare. (laughs) (laughs) Alison, what about you? You've got a flavour of the man that is Willie Rennie, but who would you have replace him at the top of the leadership of the Scottish Lib Dems? 
Well, I want to go a bit outside the box. Um, like, I wouldn't have said them about two years ago, but I think they have become politically radicalised, and that is Jedward. Um, <laughs> I think Jedward should be the new, both of them should be the new leader of the Liberal Democrat Party in Scotland. You could uh, call one Lib and call one Dame. Oh, That'd yes! Exactly. <laughs> yes! This is all coming together. <laughs> Who should replace him, Ray? Donald Trump. That mm. is... Wow! Mm. Like, imagine he just comes in and starts saying stuff like, I'm going to bring up build a wall around Fife and then all of a sudden Lib Dems have 22 seats in Parliament off the back of it that's what we want to see they could put reservoirs all over the country and the slogan could be lock her up (laughs) (laughs) lock her up (laughs) well done Willie Rennie that is the right answer and two points go to Susan and Jamie And it's time now for our final quickfire round, which is all about deciphering the numbers in the news. So I will read out a headline. All the teams have to do is fill in the blanks. Get ready, teams. When we run out of time, you'll hear this. Not now, guys. I'm actually working right now. That is Hollywood director James Mangold there boasting about being the only person in Glasgow that hasn't been furloughed. <laughs> <laughs> he is actually in the city filming the new Indiana Jones film. Right, teams, here we go. What can you buy for £700 in London? A PPE contract. <laughs> <laughs> what can you buy for £700 in London? Self-esteem. <laughs> <laughs> what can you buy for £700 in London? A loaf. <laughs> what can you buy for £700 in London? A big issue. <laughs> what can you buy for £700 in London? The last ever chicken and bacon crispy pancake. <laughs> <laughs> what can you buy for £700 in London? Nothing if it's Scottish notes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> the actual answer is that for £700 in London, you can buy a salmon. Yes, if you shop in Harrods, what? they're selling wild salmon for 445 quid per kilo, making the average price of a salmon in Harrods in London £700. Not now, guys. I'm actually working right now. Oh, there we go. That is the klaxon. <laughs> James has mangolded. It's all over. And at the end of the quiz, our winners this week are Susan Riddle, and Jamie McDonald, and commiserations to Ray Bradshaw and Alison Spittle. Hey. And we'll leave you with the breaking the news. Breaking news, Justin. Donald Trump has released a new book. It's been described as colourful, or at least it is. Once you've finished using the crayons, it comes with it. <laughs> Changes will be made to a busy area of Falkirk Town Centre in a bid to make it safer for pedestrians and reduce antisocial behaviour. Yes, they're moving it to Stirling. <laughs> and Richard Branson has flown to the edge of space, narrowly beating Jeff Bezos, who's only own flight will take off on the 20th of July. Bezos' flight is historic because the spacesuit lets you do a wee in them, making it the first time an Amazon employee will be allowed to go to the toilet during their shift. <laughs> <laughs> the news is broken. I've been Des Clark. Goodbye! <laughs> 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 <laughs>